Hello, my name is Cheyenne Bradley, and today we'll be discussing the world's most influential figures in jazz, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong was born August 4th of 1901 in New Orleans, Louisiana, in a poor black section called Storyville, and died at his home in Queens, New York, on July 6th, 1971. Louis only had a fifth grade education, dropping out early to work. Growing up poor, Louis, nicknamed Little Louis at the time, took on many jobs to nurture his for his family. His first job included working for the Jewish Konofsky family, which allowed him to make enough money to afford a cornet. He hunted for bits of brass and tinfoil that he sold to junk dealers. He peddled newspapers on the streets and he even took on adult errands. When Louis was younger, he and his friends shot cap guns to make noise, but due to it being illegal, Louis Armstrong was taken to reform school, the color wife's fam home for boys. Although during his stay in reform school, Lewis learned to successfully play the cornet and even became the leader of the wife's brass band. Dur playing music quickly became a passion of Lewis. In his teens, he frequently listened to pioneer jazz artists of the day leading, including the New Orleans cornist King Oliver. King Oliver had taken Lewis under his guidance and began training him in the arts of jazz music. Louis developed his talents rapidly, becoming skillful enough to place Oliver in an important Kid Ori band in 1918 and performed in Mississippi Riverboat dance bands during the 1920s. With Oliver then leading a band in Chicago in 1922, Armstrong was sent to play second corner in Oliver's Creole jazz band. The jazz band included many popular musicians at the time, such as Brothers Johnny and Baby Dodds. And pianist Lil Hardin, who later married Armstrong in 1924. Encouraged by his wife, Armstrong was sent out to seek fame in New York, playing in many jazz bands and even performing various songs of the time period, such as That's My Home, Body Soul, and Stardust. Louis and Lil Armstrong separated in 1931, and in 1935, Armstrong's career was managed by Joe, who had guided his film career, Glass, Glass or Pennies from Heaven, 1966, and radio performances. Nonetheless, Louis Armstrong was a phenomenal character in this time, spreading joy to others. Armstrong played out into his heart and soul, and even changed the jazz industry as a whole. Following off on to another topic, we're also going to discuss the renowned SNCC, or otherwise known as the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. The SNCC was founded in April 1960 by young people dedicated to nonviolent and more direct tactics. Martin Luther King Jr. had hoped that the SNCC would serve as a youth wing for the SCLC, Southern Christian Leadership Conference. But the SNCC remained adamant on staying independent of King and the SCLC by generating their own projects and strategies. Although the SNCC and the SCLC were at odds due, their, due to their differences, both worked together during the early years of the civil rights movement. The idea for this organization came from Ella Baker, a veteran of veteran civil rights organizer and an SCLC official. She had invited black students who had participated in 1960 sit-ins to an April 1960 gathering at Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina. Baker motivated more than 200 students to stay autonomous rather than a fleet with SCLC or any of the other existence of rights groups. At the Raleigh conference, the students were generally reluctant to stage their own independent protests. The decision eventually led to establishing only a temporary coordinating body. Vanderbilt University theology student James Lawson drafted the statement of purpose that reflected a strong commitment to the Gandon nonviolence. The SNCC made many large impacts during the civil rights movement, such as the 1961's Freedom Rides, which were designed to test the 1960 Supreme Court rulings that declared se segregation in interstate travel facilities. The Congress of Racial Equality has sponsored the Freedom Rides, but violent segregationists had attacked riders traveling through Alabama. Students from Nashville under the 
leadership of Diane Nash resolved to finish their lives. Another establishment became of the August 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. SNCC Chairman Lew John Lewis was one of the one of those scheduled to speak, and he had intended on remaining adamant on criticizing John F. Kennedy's civil rights bill, but softened his delivery to appease A. Dot Philip Randolph, another March organizer. The SNCC had wanted their freedom, and they wanted it now. The voting rights demonstrations that began in 1965 in Selma, Alabama, and ignited bitter debates between members of the SNCC. Some workers even went as far as to challenge the SNCC's commitment to nonviolent tactics and its willingness to allow the participation of white activists. Mont Montgomery March, Stokely Carmichael, and other SNCC organizers entered the rural area between Selma and Montgomery and helped black residents launch the All Black Londes County Freedom Organization, later known as the Black Panther Party. Meanwhile, several SNCC workers established Inceptin organizing efforts in violent urban black ghettos. In 1966, the SNCC also aimed their support in the protests against the Vietnam War. The SNCC was eventually disbanded by the early 1970s.